Good evening, uh, counselors. This is our October 12th council meeting. And I do believe I'm not seeing Joe, right? I think we're just missing Joe Merritt. Um, at this time, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. all. Okay, please note that uh, Councillor Merritt is with us, so we do have all councillors present. At this time, um, there's supposed to be a presentation of notable landscape awards by Ms. Sharon Mann, the Bloomfield Beautification Committee. Is she with us? All righty. I am, but I need to have the screen shared. One, Okay. Am I joining as a panelist? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, India, I'm going to share the screen, right? Yes. Okay. Take me a second here. Excellent. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. I just want to get rid of these people here. Okay. Okay. Uh, good evening, Town Council and the town manager and Madam Mayor. I am pleased to be here as chair of the Bloomfield Beautification Committee, also known as BBC, to recognize some very special people tonight. So we're gonna, this is gonna take a second here, okay. So I wanna talk a little bit about the history of what I'm talking about tonight. Since 1989, BBC has recognized residential, commercial, and industrial property owners within our town who make a positive contribution to Bloomfield's appearance through landscaping and maintenance of their properties. These, rep these residents represent the heart and the soul of our community. They live throughout our town. They create a sense of community pride that has actually encouraged fellow neighbors to join in. So the BBC committee is composed of Risa Capadonna, Dana Chamurda, Gwen Finley, Deb Goslin, Henrietta Hirschfeld, and Eva Kanoka, who has been the coordinator for the Notable Landscaping Awards this year and myself. We all this year went to each winner to notify them of their recognition of being awarded a notable landscape award. How humble and touched they were to receive these awards. Our winners felt honored to be recognized. It's a social connector for many of them. Neighbors come up to them and ask for suggestions for their own yards. They love the communication. It's so wonderful to speak to these residents. It is striking how thrilled and honored they are to be recognized. They are so proud of what they do and they are all anxious to share stories of why they love to garden. They love the thrill of trying to even make their gardens better. So game on all of you Bloomfield gardeners for next year. Sorry about that. So in addition to the BBC committee who participated in the nomination process this year, and I have a lot of people to thank because it's true, it takes a village and there are a lot of people who volunteer to make this all happen. A special shout out goes to Diana Hughes and Becky Stanward from the Tunnelin Woods Garden Club and Hope Bruff, who took a section of town for nominations. 
Hope was a 2020 award winner, and we have many previous winners who continue to be involved as volunteers. We had over 100 nominations, and so special thanks go to our two judges, Ricky Zito, a landscape designer for Green Machine, and he's the grandson of Millie Zito, who was one of the original founders of the BBC. And also another judge was a 2020 notable landscape winner, Veronica Williams, who's an exceptional gardener herself. You have to check out Seven Cindy Lane where she gardens. Her flowers are fabulous and filled with color. So they went around, it took a whole day and they viewed each nomination and after much deliberation, 23 residents and one business was selected as this year's 2021 notable landscape winners. The properties were judged based on neatness, creativity, color harmony, plant health, plant selection, and overall curbside appeal. And if they had invasive plants, they got a penalty point for it. So the winners this year are as follows in alphabetical order by their street addresses. Faye and Lincoln Thomas, one Alfred Circle. And I'll leave these on just for a few seconds so everyone can observe. All these gardens, everyone's different. It's amazing. Everyone has different qualities. And I think that's what the judges saw. They looked for that. Aaron McComb and Howie Kinsman. If you don't see an address, it's only because they asked for it not to be shown. Ricky Jones, 673 Bloomfield Avenue. If you've ever gone down Bloomfield Avenue, I'm sure you observed this garden. He does a beautiful, she and he and Jay do a beautiful garden every year. Lucy and Tony Shaskis, 11 Clare Lane. Barbara Steele and Benjamin Scott live on 261 Duncaster Road. Usually you can see Barbara out working every day. And also there's a community garden across the street where she and a number of other residents in the area maintain it to beautify the neighborhood. Ola Humes lives at 53 Inglewood Avenue. You have to take a ride by her house. Her curbside garden is uh, awesome. It has all kinds of plant material. She's out there pruning, trimming, and you can even see in the upper right-hand corner a boxwood that she trimmed into a heart-shaped form. She's an amazing gardener, and she does all this herself. Keeps very busy. Edna and Robert Demery at 34 Philly Street. Another fascinating garden, lots of things. You can see these huge hostas on the right. Robert and, and Edna take great pride in their gardens and they do a fabulous job. Also this year, they were on the uh, Artful Garden Tour with the Historical Society. And if you didn't see that uh, and missed it, hopefully they'll do it again. It was a wonderful way to go around and see community gardens in our community, in our town. Stephan Julian is a winner. She's won several times before. She lives at 26 Florence Road. Uh, don't be deceived by her sitting in that chair because she's always working to make this garden special. She specializes in all kinds of tropical plants and her hydrangea on the right-hand side is an amazing specimen. Diana Hamilton, 14 Jonathan Place. Lots of color, annuals and perennials and topiaries. She does it all. Bill and Marsha Watson live at 15 Kenmore Road and their specialty are uh, shrubs and trees and they do it all themselves. And one thing that was fun is uh, Bill's uh, 
and, and Marsha's uh, enjoyment of putting whimsy in the garden. Those are some of their cow sculptures you'll see in the center. Dr. Harry Arthur Conte it has a most unusual garden. It's filled with uh, uh, amazing number of boxwood shrubs. And after talking to him, it turns out that he was greatly influenced by his mother who loved landscaping and they came from New Haven. And actually there's a street named after their family in New Haven. And when he found out that he was, um, recognized for a notable landscape as a notable landscape winner, he was thrilled because he couldn't wait to share the news with his 90 year old mother that she would be so excited to hear this. And who doesn't know Isaac? Isaac Sutter, Isaac's Bagel Cafe, 16B Mountain Avenue. He does an amazing job. That man is out sometimes, I'll come out from eating down uh, at a restaurant near there, and he'll be out watering at 9 p.m. at night. Uh, he takes great pride in his plant material. He's, he does it all himself. He waters it every day, he feeds it. And at the end of the year, he has given many of his plants to the beautification committee, and we've planted them in different areas of town in different public gardens that we maintain. Devon and Eunice Metwinter, 46 Newport Drive. Another one of those gardens that look prolific, beautiful, and full of color. And he likes to do the boxes too. There's lots of planters. And gardens aren't just for single homeowners. This is the Glenwood Green Homeowners Association Landscape Committee, a group of women who maintain the front entryway uh, to Oliver Way, and it's called Glenwood Green. And they take care of all the plants and they plant new plants. And they were very proud that they had put a cistern in this year for watering. Of course, we had a lot of water this year, but that didn't matter. They, they were pleased that they could do things. And as you can see, they decorate for the holidays also. Andre and Michelle Ewen live at 461 Park Avenue. Now that's a street where you can't slow down because there's lots of traffic, but if you can, you have to look on your right at this wonderful garden. Not only does uh, Michelle changed the planters every year and she likes to use tropical plants, but they're, they've done all the stonework themselves. They taught themselves how to do it and they're about to put down a paver driveway. Um, it, it, as you go by, you'll see their driveway is gonna have all new pavers and they're teaching themselves how to do that. And they've done a wonderful job of landscaping. Stephen Vancouver, lives at the Regency, 9 Regency Drive, apartment one. And Stephen comes from a family of landscapers. His father was Ted's Landscaping. He worked at one time for the DPW and Stephen has followed in his footsteps. He was nominated many times by the people in the Regency for what he does there to beautify um, the area where he lives. Linda and Austin Linda Leiden live at 37 Saddle Ridge. It's a very beautiful garden uh, nestled into the hillside. As you can see, um, Linda's standing there. It's a mixture of foliage plants with shrubs and uh, let's see, mostly shrubs, but even in her pots, there were some uh, mandevilla and other plants, petunias coming out. It was very serene and had a beautiful view. And Betty Dugan and Cindy Willis is someone to uh, recognize. Betty lives at 326 Seabury and she wanted her neighbor, Cindy Willis to get recognition. And why? Because Cindy was instrumental in helping her transplant her garden from another Seabury location. And she helped Betty also dig up her existing garden. Betty suffered a knee injury in 2020 and could not have completed her garden without Cindy's help.
it's so nice to see that, you, you know, gardening doesn't have to be one person doing it. It's friends helping each other. It's community. It's what it's all about. And you could notice this garden has lots of wonderful layers of color. And then we come to Charlotte and Vaughn Ramsher who live at Three Stone Hill. Charlotte is a garden who doesn't is a gardener who there is no space that hasn't been something hasn't had something put in it. She does an amazing job of transforming uh, bare soil into beautiful plants. She has creative ideas. Vaughn, her husband, helps her. Some of you might remember Vaughn. He was a principal at, at the um, Bloomfield High School many years ago, and now he's a regular gardener, does a fabulous job. Patricia and Robert Wheeler, excuse me, Wheeler, live at Nine Waltz Hill. They took the front of their yard and made a, a wonderful sweeping uh, curve, in and out curve, um, and planted all kinds of uh, different plants in this uh, planting in front of their house. And it's what's interesting is that, you know, there's all kinds of ways to garden and there's no, and you don't have to lock yourself into saying you just have to put a couple of plants in front of your house and that's it. It's, it's really wonderful and uh, amazing to see how people have different ideas and how they all work. And Barbara Jean and Robert Forbes live at 37 Wesleyan Terrace. And Barbara Jean is an enthusiastic woman who just loves to garden. Every year she too tries out different plants. And uh, she, she had cannas this year and she tries different plants and she just loves to garden. And it's, uh, it's wonderful to hear her when she speaks because she has so much enthusiasm in her voice and how excited she is to be gardening every year. And she also was a winner in 2020. Joanna, Joanne and William Fuss, 215 Woodland Avenue have a very different garden. Their garden is very full and it's uh, there's no spaces. It's just all blends together and it works very nicely. And if you happen to ride down Woodland Avenue, check it out. It's a beautiful old stone house and all the plants work very nicely. Um, it's, it's the type of garden that Really, there's not a lot of maintenance because it all grows together. You may do some editing to it, but up in the top, I believe those are asters blooming now in the fall. So that concludes the uh, number of winners this year of the Notable Landscape Award winners. More photos of the award winners will soon be featured on the BBC's Instagram page, which if you'd like to go to, we showcase not only our winners, but all the gardens that the BBC maintains in Bloomfield. And sometimes there's information on what the plants are and how to take care of them. And that's at BBC underscore Bloomfield underscore CT. And also look for information coming on the BBC page of our Bloomfield website and also the Bloomfield Journal. Not the journal, it's the messenger now. So remember that all gardeners live in beautiful places because they make them so. And this reflects well on our community. So please know the town of Bloomfield and the Bloomfield Beautification Committee Thank all of you winners this year, notable landscape winners of what you do to make our town beautiful. Thank you and congratulations again. And that concludes my presentation for this evening. Excellent, thank you. Thank you to the Beautification Committee and thank you to our Residents and congratulations to all our winners. I just wanna speak quickly on 53 Inglewood Avenue. Her front yard is gorgeous, but her backyard is like an oasis. Um, walking around and knocking doors, you saw some beautiful, beautiful landscape. And I know that we can't give everybody an award, 
but thank you to all those who make an extra effort to um, keep your community blooming. Thank you so very much. I do see Councilor Curtin. I'm assuming he wants to say something as well. Uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I just want to say uh, congratulations to all the winners and thanks to the beautification committee. I guess I need to go back to the drawing table. I thought that I missed it by probably uh, one or two points. So some work over the winter and I'll be back for next year, Sharon. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, Councillor, good luck with that. <laughs> I have to get time, your neighbors to nominate you. <laughs> at this time, we're going to um, have any citizen statements and petitions. Okay. India? There aren't anybody right now. No one? Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, we're going to have um, our council subcommittees. If you have not had a meeting, and you're going to have a meeting, please just go ahead and state that. At this time, Councilor Wong. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening. We had to reschedule our community service subcommittee meeting as it was scheduled today, but we needed to shift uh, public safety to today as well as the council meeting. So we have to reschedule community services. We'll do that and notify the public when that happens. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I'm going to go with finance and admin education and finance. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the Administration Education Committee met on October 4th, uh, pretty much a short uh, meeting. Uh, we basically uh, received the report uh, from the Zoning Blight Enforcement Officer. Uh, let me just rephrase that. We are still looking for a Zoning and Blight Enforcement Officer, but we did receive a report from uh, Jose Geiner, uh, our consultants, uh, that we hired are currently uh, looking at um, the various uh, zoning infractions within the town. Uh, nothing has changed from the special meeting we had in September. Uh, we also reviewed the, the memorial gift and donation and naming of the town facilities. Uh, we, the, the committee made some tweaks so that hopefully that policy would come back to the committee in the month of, uh, I think the month of uh, November, and uh, hopefully to the council for adoption. Uh, we did briefly talk about the minority set aside program discussion regarding the town participation and uh, engagement with uh, disparity study that the state is gonna be taken on. Uh, so hopefully that we can make some adjustment to how uh, we can increase that participation within the town of Bloomfield within the Hartford County. And, and that's the extent of my report. We did not have anything to report on uh, finance, Madam Mayor, that's in uh, uh, in a couple of weeks uh, will be that meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, public Safety, Councilor Goff. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, public Safety met tonight at 6 p.m. before this meeting. Um, I will give you a brief report on uh, from the chiefs and then tell you of the action we took. Um, so Chief Hammock and the police department uh, re reported a 10% month over month increase in, in crime statistics. And that put us at year to date 4% over last year this time. Um, the main things for um, the month of September, we had four assaults, uh, several fist fights, uh, uh, two of them at the uh, Metropolitan Learning Center. Uh, one fight at a local business and one domestic violence incident. We also, as you, as as often the case, had 47 larcenies, most of which were shoplifting into incidents uh, in various businesses located at um, the Capaco um, Center area. And obviously, that's something we continue. Um, you know, the stores there continue to try to uh, control. Um, there were also three auto thefts. One thing that was interesting about that is that um, one of them, uh, one of them, well, actually, I, I take that back. We had three auto thefts. Those were most, those were again the issue with uh, fobs and keys left in the car. Uh, and the larcenies, though, I did want to mention that one of the incidents was uh, with catalytic converters. The, that is something that is happening around the state where there are people. Um, going after catalytic converters and cars. Uh, I don't, I think they basically take the precious yeah. metals uh, in, in, internal to the catalytic converter and uh, uh, move those on. 
Um, so uh, the the police department is aware of that and is continuing to to work on that. Um, some good news on the hiring front. Uh, we, we had been down for a long time, four officers. We are now down two, although there is a potential uh, uh, new vacancy, but there are two new hires and we are in the process of hiring, the town's in the process of hiring the part-time dispatch position. Um, there was uh, the usual activity on uh, speeding uh, and, and citizen complaints on the various roads. Terry Plains Road was the uh, main source of speed shield data for September. Uh, it, <laughs> while it uh, an interesting uh, factoid, uh, the, the speed limit there is 35 miles per hour. The average speed uh, of having a speed shield uh, up for a month with an average of 1,482 cars a day was that the average speed was only 36.5 miles per hour, which is only a mile and a half over the speed limit on average, but the, uh, the maximum was uh, 80 miles per hour, which I find an amazing, uh, amazing thing on that street. Um, data was also collected on Prospect, Woodland, Brown, and uh, Burr Roads. Um, the uh, the uh, police force will be participating in the Greater, Greater Hartford Regional Auto Theft Task Force. I think you've been reading a lot about that in the papers that uh, that's a problem. Uh, uh, that's a problem with, um, uh, we've seen a lot in the newspaper with various communities and it's good we are participating in that. We will get some financial assistance from the state around $30,000 to pay for overtime and other, other things with that. Um, the support services focused on a number of problems, one of which, uh, uh, well, the, the, the three of which, uh, uh, the main ones, uh, quite a bit of activity on Blue Hills Avenue, the block watch area, the block watch group there with uh, looking at various uh, traffic and other issues on Jackson, Coventry and some of the adjacent roads. Uh, they're also looking at complaints about student housing for University of Hartford students. And finally, they're looking at some um, after hours parties on Granby Street at businesses. And there have been some complaints, especially by Thomas Hooker Brewery. So um, the, the, um, the, the, the uh, chief and the force are uh, on top of those things and uh, um, are uh, trying to get them under control. There was one use of force. It was a larceny suspect who needed to be restrained. Um, there, you know, the investigation showed that there was no problem with that. Um, the, uh, we've mentioned several times that we are gonna have a uh, person, a, a mental health specialist uh, from CHR starting to work with the force. The woman, the, the person's name is Lauren Rooney and she will be starting uh, in early November. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to mention about crime, because people are probably reading about in the papers, I know there was a story in the Hartford Current today, uh, there was a shooting incident last night on Brookline Avenue, uh, there was a press release from the town, I will not read it in full, uh, I will just note that um, they responded to shots fired at the 130 to 150 block of Brookline Avenue, uh, after a report of multiple gunshots to the area. Uh, at this time, there are two individuals that, that had serious gunshot wounds, although neither of them are expected to be life-threatening. Life uh, one was a 23-year-old male from Hartford, and the other was a 27-year-old male from Bloomfield. Uh, and the detectives and the police are investigating that, and uh, there will obviously be more information forthcoming as the facts come to light and the detectives get more information. Uh, the fire districts had a relatively quiet month with most of the activity being flooding and electrical, uh, electrical issues from the storms we had at the beginning of the month. Um, the Center Fire District had a total of 64 calls bringing the year to date total of 409. And the Blue Hills Fire Department had 50 calls bringing the year to date total to 390. Um, they did have one serious fire at 14 Talcott View uh, in, uh, in the Blue Hills Fire District. The Center Fire District uh, responded to that as a backup. Uh, a firefighter did suffer a leg injury in that, and there is an investigation ongoing. 
Um, EMS, um, the, there was nothing, uh, they, they have a meeting scheduled, but they have, uh, they have started to institute the first part of their incentive plan, which the committee discussed last time, and that will be evaluated after six months to see if it's effective in getting more volunteers at the, um, at the uh, uh, times uh, that they need more volunteers. Um, so we spent most of the meeting after those reports, we spent the rest of the meeting uh, talking about the traffic calming uh, program, and in particular, the draft ordinance on uh, restricted truck, truck traffic. So uh, a couple of general comments on the uh, traffic calming program, which I think um, all agree is uh, moving along nicely. Um, the committee uh, met once to discuss several of their tentative plans for mitigation. And in particular, they have purchased, the town has now purchased four uh, removable speed humps um, that they can vary the size on. And I think the first um, the first place they're going to try some of these is out in the Coventry, uh, Coventry Elizabeth Street area, um, but they are waiting for those to come in, but they have been purchased. Uh, just for, as a reminder to people listening in, the one of the ideas of this program is to implement um, potential solutions, you know, physical solutions that are that are required to implement trial solutions, try to be able to gauge how well they work, and then potentially, if, especially if they're higher cost items, uh, be able to put them in the town budget for the following year. Uh, and then this is a good first step. Uh, the rest of the meeting was taken up with discussion of the proposed um, Restrict, uh, ordinance restricting semi-trailer trucks on town roads. Uh, I know I've talked about this several times. Um, the As a result of the traffic commie meetings months ago on Woodland Avenue, uh, it was discovered that the town could indeed, uh, through Attorney Needleman um, did the research, we could indeed put various restrictions on truck traffic that were, you know, that were using town roads, not state roads, as cut-throughs. And after examination, Attorney Needleman uh, at the committee's uh, unanimous request uh, drafted an ordinance that will um, restrict semi-trailer tra uh, semi um, traffic, hard to say, uh, on six town streets that are cut-throughs to various state roads. Uh, the streets involved are Maple and Brown Avenue, uh, uh, the three roads off Cottage Grove, Prospect, Tyler, and School Street, and Woodland Avenue. Um, after hearing from both uh, the town engineer and a number of citizens, the committee unanimously voted uh, five to nothing to uh, refer this to town council for uh, public hearing and, and after public hearing, hopefully, um, uh, enactment. Um, so when we get to new, the new business section tonight, I will be asking that we add an agenda item uh, to uh, the council meeting tonight so that we can set the public hearing for uh, to discuss the ordinance at the next meeting. Um, and I believe that concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Committee on Committees, Councillor Calhoun. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Committee on Committees has not met, um, and it's just confliction with uh, other meetings as well as uh, with this holiday. So thank you. Land Use and Economic mm -hmm. Development, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, land Use and Economic Development did not meet uh, since our last uh, council meeting. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is uh, for next Tuesday, the 19th. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll go into council uh, new business 2122 20. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, move that we add an agenda item to the uh, council agenda to set the public hearing to discuss the truck restriction ordinance, as I mentioned in my report. Second. 
Any discussions? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that will be 2122-27. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, 2122-24, uh, consider and take action regarding adoption of resolution, uh, state homeland security grant program. Is anyone going to speak with that, um, Mr. Hawthorne? Yes, Madam Mayor, this is an annual rite of passage in effect um, administered through, this is a grant program um, that comes from funding of the um, Homeland Security Department. And each year it's required for municipalities to pass a resolution in order to qualify for mm -hmm. participation. So we could ask your approval. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hawthorne. Is there a motion on the floor, please? Mm, Councilor Merrick, do you want to read the motion? Do you have it, sir? Councilor Merrick? Uh, Andy, can you I don't have it in front of me, sorry. Andy, can you read the motion, please? Sure. Resolved that the town of Bloomfield may enter into with and delivered to the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, Division of Emergency Management and Homeland Security, and any and all documents which it deems to be necessary or appropriate, and further resolve that Stanley B. Hawthorne, as town manager of the town of Bonefield, is authorized and directed to execute and deliver any and all documents on behalf of the town of Bonefield, and to do and perform all acts and things which he, she deems to be necessary or appropriate to carry out the terms of such documents, including but not limited to executing and delivering all agreements and documents contemplated by such documents. The undersigned further certifies that Stanley D. Hawthorne now holds the office of town manager and that he has held that office since August 31st of 2021. That's the, that's, and I think Councilor DiLorenzo, you were seconding that. Any discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor, your hand is up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I think this is, uh, as the manager says, rather perfunctory uh, action. Uh, Homeland Security is involving as many communities as possible to share in, in, materiel and I'm sure ideas and, uh, and how to function during different uh, perilous times. What, I, what my question is, is that sounds all good, uh, but it's been a while since we really found out or had discussed what it is that we're responsible for here with respect to vehicles or equipment that we have to pay insurance, we have to maintain, we have to know about. Is this program really uh, a benefit to the town? I have to assume it is because I have no other information. But I think if uh, I'm willing to pass it this time, but I think next time we ought to maybe take a little deeper look at it to see what's all involved here. <laughs> we're, we're signing something that's six pages long, but it really doesn't tell you what we got. So I, I just voice that as a, a statement of concern. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. 2122-25, consider and take action regarding tax refunds. Is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Is there a second? There's a second, Councilor Calhoun. Any discussions? Any clarifications from our finance director? Uh, no, uh, this is uh, usually what we do. Uh, request for refunds of various taxes. Uh, submitted for your approval in accordance to section 12 of the Connecticut General State Statute. And favorable, um, uh, favorable, looking favorable on this is something that I would recommend. Excellent. Um, seeing there's no other discussions, all in favor? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. 2122-26, consider impossible action concerning settlement of pending tax appeals. This will be discussed in executive sessions. We will then come back out and take a vote. 2122-27, uh, this is the um, ordinance for the uh, truck traffic. Uh, Councilor Goff. 
Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you uh, again. Um, the I, you know I would like to um, move that the council um, uh, uh, what uh, accept the um, uh, recommendation of the Public Safety Committee to move this proposed uh, uh, ordinance forward and schedule a public hearing for our next meeting on October. Uh, let me grab my calendar. Uh, October 25th um, to get public public input on it at that time. Is there a second? Oh, second. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilor Wong. Any discussions? So I was at the um, I was at the uh, public safety meeting, and I I think we definitely need to get something on the books in regards to truck traffic, um, heavy, tr heavy truck traffic, uh, tractor trailer traffic, and get those uh, tr trucks out of our residential neighborhoods. But one of the things that um, came up was, okay, if we're going to get them off these roads, where are they going to go? And I never really thought about that. I thought, let's get the ordinance, let's work it out, let's push forward. Um, I don't know if that's something that we, sh we should try to look at, that traffic study. I know that this is very important and time is of the essence to save some of those neighborhood roads that the trucks are just destroying. Um, so I just want to put that out there because I heard it in, in the subcommittee meeting. Um, I don't know if you want to hear everyone else because there's a lot of hands up, but I just wanted to put that out there. Um, I'm going to go how I see the hands on my screen, Councillor Wong. Councilor Curtin, Deputy Mayor, and Councilor DiLorenzo. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I support this ordinance. Uh, I think that this is a great first step uh, as far as phasing out of you know big commercial trucks and semi uh, semi tractor trailers going through very small, condensed, high density population neighborhoods. I think that uh, the one important thing that this ordinance does address is isolating big commercial truck traffic and making sure that we still allow for smaller truck traffic, which we know demonstrates that there are small businesses, entrepreneurship, and people that need to go through the smaller areas. So this doesn't point them out. This doesn't, um, this protects that type of truck traffic from going into residential areas, but it does prohibit the larger semi-tractor trailers from going through these very small cut through areas. So I think the ordinance is very clean. It's very short, it's very clean cut and to the point, and uh, I think that's a good start. One thing that we did discuss in the public safety meeting was in regards to uh, right, raising the fee. Right now, the ticket would be $99, and I think some of the other residents chimed in that they would like to see that higher. I think that we, we can address that at a later time. I think, again, this ordinance is a really good first start. And what this does allow us to do is amend it at a later time with much flexibility. So if we don't, if we find that we need to do tweaks and amendments down the line, we can certainly do that with ease. So uh, good work, uh, you know, Councillor uh, Goff for getting this on the books and really making sure that we hear the residents and act uh, through and via policy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Councilor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just one request and I have a comment. Can uh, Councilor Goff just read the ordinance for folks who are um, here tonight and who's not aware of what's in that ordinance? And uh, the one thing that I, I did listen in on the meeting tonight that I think we really have to, to look at is there's a cause and effect. We're shifting it from one area. How does it affect somewhere else? So I think that's something that we need to monitor as we go forward with this. Uh, because while some neighbors will be happy that there's no truck traffic in, in a, School Street was an example that brought up in the meeting, but what's going to happen if that traffic is now shipped somewhere else? Bloomfield is a condensed area in this, uh, this part of town, and the truck has to go somewhere. So I just want to make sure that there's further discussion and study and see how we could mitigate that. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Oh yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me let me pause for a minute. Yeah, who's going to read the ordinance? And have Councilor Goff read the ordinance. Yes. <laughs> sure. I'd be happy to do that. Um, so the ordinance is 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 very short. Um, 
uh, this is proposed ordinance section 1964 tra tractor trailer truck traffic. Say that fast three times. Um, a definition, tractor trailer truck means every motor vehicle comprised of both a tractor and a semi-trailer, uh, meaning a tractor truck pulling or towing a semi-trailer are designated and used for the purpose of drawing a semi-trailer other than emergency and public safety vehicles. B, no person shall operate any tractor trailer truck in the following areas. Uh, one, School Street between Cottage Grove Road and Park Avenue, except while on a trip with a point of origin from or destination within, within said area. Two, Tyler Street between Cottage Grove Road and Park Avenue, except while on a trip with a point or origin from or destination within said area. Three, Maple Avenue between Cottage Grove and Mountain Avenue, except on a trip with a point of origin from or destination within said, at, at said at area. Four, Brown Street between the intersection of Tunxis Avenue slash Terry Plains Road and Mountain Avenue, except while on a trip with a point of origin from or destination within said area. Five, Prospect Street between Cottage Grove Road and Park Avenue, except while on a trip with a point of origin from or destination within said area. And six, Woodland Avenue between Winbury Avenue and Brighton Park Drive, except while on a trip with a point of origin from or destination within said area. Section C, the penalty for a violation of this ordinance shall be $99 for each, uh, for each offense. And I see that uh, while I was reading, India placed it on the screen. As noted, this is a very simple, concise, easily amendable ordinance. Uh, streets can be added to it or taken off. The, the amount can be changed. So um, I, uh, that's, that's the ordinance. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I support this ordinance. Uh, is it perfect? I don't know. It, will it ever be perfect? I don't know that either. There's a lot of considerations that we have to deal with. But the first thing that comes to mind when this, uh, with reading this ordinance is that it could provide great relief for some of these streets that have been historically used as pass-throughs. The answer to some of the concerns raised about, well, where's the traffic going to go? That's a good question. And you could spend a lot of time looking at that as well. We're fortunate that at the beginning and the end of each one of these streets is a state highway. And that's where the traffic should be going. We don't have control over the state traffic it's the state routes to say what traffic should be on, on those roads. But we do have control over the drivers coming off of those state routes to catch a shortcut through a residential neighborhood. That's what this is all about. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a well-written ordinance and it's also leaves the opportunity for amendment over time. There's a couple of questions came up during the course of, of our meeting tonight, having to do with dump trucks uh, or even garbage trucks that are off duty heading to the terminal for gasoline. Uh, they Maybe we could find some way to include them in the same prohibition because obviously the weight of those vehicles is no, uh, no less daunting than a tractor trailer. So I think, uh, I, I think once we get the a sense of uh, community on this. And if we do have time to look at the, some other exigencies that could occur with respect to rerouting, if, that was, if that's a concern. Uh, after the public hearing, we have another chance to, to, uh, to finalize and put more detail here. But I think as is written, it's a good start. And I think it's something that would be uh, upheld. I think we also talked in the meeting tonight about the use of GPS or, ident or, or communicating with GPS uh, vendors, whoever they are, making it clearly known that certain streets are off limits to these vehicles so that when the drivers uh, check their routes uh, or when the company gives them a route, it's clearly marked out that they shouldn't be going on these roads. And I think that would be a great help to, uh, to implementing this ordinance. Thank you. Uh, Council DiLorenzo. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I, I like this ordinance too, I guess. Uh, some of my questions have already been answered, so that's good. But the two I did have is, you know, on the Woodland Street one, does this also, you know, make truck traffic from, say, some of those uh, large businesses, warehouses that are on, on Woodland or use part of Woodland to get in and out of, of their areas? Does this impact them as well? Does it include them? 
Uh, I'll answer that. Yes, it does include them, but okay. only the one. That, but it excludes the part of Woodland Street from uh, Brighton Park South. Uh, they can't drive heavy traffic down there. It, this this is probably the most dif difficult route to to see be be managed successfully. But the intent is that most traffic destined for those buildings is oriented from. 91 moving in off of Blue Hills Avenue or 187 to get to those locations. And then they just turn around and go back out the other way. They don't have to go through the center of town and tie everything up. Right. Again, okay. it has, that, that could result in some tweaking down the line. Okay, good. That's That was one. The other one is as far as, I think you touched on it, Deputy Mayor, but how will this ordinance, if in fact it is approved and uh, moves forward, how is it communicated and how is it enforced? How will trucks know not to go on these roads? Well, I believe, I believe they're talking about signage. Uh, clear signage, is, which, would, which would identify the prohibition. It might even identify alternate routes. Uh, but that's, that's the primary way. And that's the only way that we can make it known. Uh, enforcement is another issue. Uh, enforcement could occur. Uh, it either could be proactive or on complaints from residents, which might encourage the police department to put, you know, a, a, a detail there to, to, to observe, uh, or if it gets to a point that it, it clearly needs more action, uh, perhaps uh, some sort of a camera. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if it would be helpful too. Be. We, that, that's something we, we really haven't, uh, that detail hasn't happened yet. It's very important. You can't put signs up if you're not going to enforce them. So that's a real important consideration as we go forward. Okay. All right, I think those are my two big concerns. So I thank you. I uh, thank you, Councillor. I'm going to uh, Councillor Calhoun. You took your hand down. Mm -mm. Okay. So just um, one thing before I go to Councillor Calhoun and then Councillor Merritt, would it be um, possible if with with that transition period that if one of the trucks are actually found in violation, that we give a warning before we actually give a ticket? so that they get into the idea of not being able to travel down this road. Just a thought. Um, I'm gonna go with Councillor Calhoun, Councillor Merritt, and then Councillor Goff. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as I brought up in um, our public safety uh, meeting, I am also for this ordinance. And I do believe that uh, we need uh, verbiage in uh, the ordinance with, that will address repeat offenders. Um, I, I do agree with the initial warning. I also believe that there should be a letter written once we have um, the ordinance in place, there should be a letter written to all the businesses, those, it's specifically the large businesses that we know handle tractor trailer and or dump truck um, vehicles, um, uh, making them aware that we are serious about the ordinance and um, Again, as you stated, I do believe there should be an initial warning um, as well as for second offenders, maybe we should up, think about upping the ante um, with the fines to, to also let those, know, those people know that uh, we are serious about this ordinance. And I, I, I do know that um, our town attorney, Mark Needleman, uh, is tightening all of this up for us. So we are within the parameters of code. Thank you. Councilor Merritt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I just wanna point out that this is not a new issue as I'm sure everybody knows. This has been around for over 20 years and we had back 20 years ago, a town manager who thought we could do absolutely nothing. And the state kept telling us that you can't do anything. Well, obviously we could have and other towns have. So I'm glad to see this happening at long last. I mean, this is something, there's no perfect answer to this, but we've got to take the first step. And I think this is a good one. So thank you. Councillor Goff. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I just want to point out one other thing that is of great benefit to the town on all of this. Um, as Deputy Mayor Mann pointed out, I, I, you know, I do understand the concerns about, well, if traffic is going on these roads, where are they going to go? But we, this is tractor trailer traffic. This is very damaging and costly on our roads. Um, 
these are all roads that connect state roads, and that is really where the track, you know, that is where the tractor trailer traffic should be traveling. Um, state, the state pay, may, pays to maintain those roads. The town pays to maintain its roads. So moving that traffic onto uh, state roads are, are, you know, keeping, I shouldn't say moving it onto, keeping it on state roads and not letting it, um, um, you know, um, deteriorate the town roads. Well, in the long run, we'll, we'll save the town money because we should, you know, we should, um, we should be paying less maintenance for those trucks, those semi-trailers going through residential roads. Uh, thank you. I see the deputy mayor's hand. Madam Mayor, thank you. Uh, I personally cannot support a warning situation for this kind of, this kind of infraction. What you're suggesting is that 500 vehicles can go down these streets and just get a warning. And the neighbors aren't gonna appreciate that. Some are very concerned about their foundations rattling apart. And I think it sends the message if you're going to give them the fine the first time. I mean, these are companies that can afford that and they'll get the message. And once that message is given to one or two of them, it'll spread throughout the uh, trucking community so that they'll realize we're serious. If we're not serious, don't do the ordinance. Thank you. So why I suggested a warning is because if I'm if I travel down East Wintonberry Avenue every single morning, that is the only way that I can get to work. If now we're saying that we're going to make East Wintonberry Avenue a one way for someone that has traveled that road for the last 14 years, I may not know that it's a one way on that day. And I'm asking, and it's totally up to the council, but I'm saying if, if, if I'm used to doing something and all of a sudden something changes, do we give them a warning to say, hey, you've been doing it now for the last 14 years, but you can't do it anymore. Unless we're going to send a pamphlet or letter to every business, that was my only thought process. I'm not saying that that's the way for us to go. I'm just thinking about people who do this on a regular basis. And all of a sudden now we're going to change the ordinance and, and tell them that they have to change behavior ASAP. That was my only concern. I see Councillor Curtin and I see Councillor Politis. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I agree with the Deputy Mayor in regards to the fine. We shouldn't have any like in between, just go ahead. But what I would say as an example, when there's a new traffic light, being put in an area. Usually there is a week or so where that traffic light remains flashing. It gives folks a sense that this is something new. What I would say, we could have these mobile flashing signs at those intersection for those locations that we're talking about, you know, within a week or so, just to identify these areas are no longer gonna be accommodating those heavy uh, tractor trailers. They need to be something, but I wouldn't say, uh, I would prefer to have something like that for a week and then kind of phase it out. But, uh, you know, word gets around. These folks are on their devices. They spread the news. So I, I think people are going to know that there is a new um, code in town in regards to the roads. So thank you. To be honest, I don't really care what it is whether it's a warning or whether it's a traffic light, my main point is we need to give people an opportunity to get used to a new normal. If they've been doing something for forever, they have to get used to a new normal and we have to be able to give them that opportunity. So whether it's a warning, a traffic light, somebody out there waving flags, I don't really care what it is. I'm just saying that we need to be a little bit, um, we need to be a little bit mindful. That's all. Any other discussions? Seeing that there is none, um, Councillor Councillor Goff, what's the motion that you would like the, to the, the, to the motion is for the council to accept the recommendation to move this forward and to schedule a public hearing for our next meeting and you know put it on the agenda. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. So I think at this point, we're going to have report from the mayor and the town manager. I'm gonna let the town manager go first. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. And Friday, I wrote uh, the town council uh, a communication giving you various updates. And it's something that I intend to continue to coincide with your town council meetings. Now, I'll say that those updates will be more specific to things that I think the council needs to be updated on, on a regular basis. And I actually just uh, sent a communication to, um, as I've described to you in that uh, update on Friday, the community building leadership team. Um, I really want to reserve um, my time on this evening, town council meetings um, and future meetings uh, to give you updates from a departmental perspective, those things that the public should know about. So there wasn't a lot of time for uh, the departments to respond today, but I do have an update from the library uh, director. And it is accordingly, Bloomfield Neighbors, our public library has partnered with Eastern Connecticut State University to celebrate the Asian community as part of the National Endowment for the Arts, Big Read. We invite you to stop by the library for your free copy of The Best We Could Do, an illustrated memoir by Thai Bao, while supplies last. Funding was generously provided by the Friends of the Bloomfield Public Library. Also, visit the McMahon Wintonberry Library to check out the welcoming library, I'm Your Neighbor display, a set of books and discussion guides introducing conversation in our immigrant communities. Third, on October 20th, we will feature the virtual program, Half a Century and Half a World Away, Southeast Asian Immigration to the United States since 1960, with Francis Cohn, Professor of History at Tunxis Community College. And finally, we are down to 20 days until the library and park referenda. Please vote. And that concludes my report, Madam Mayor. Thank you so very much. Um, I want to um, encourage our residents that the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District is having flu clinics. If you have not received your flu shot and you would like to get a flu shot, please check out the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District um, site. I do believe that we also have information on our site. There is information on the COVID-19 vaccination booster or third shot, however you want to classify it. I know that we should have it on our site, but it's also on the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District site. So please, please, please get yourself some information. And if you need to make appointments, please call the health district. Also, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Please, women, take care of your tatas. If you have not had your yearly mammogram, please get it done this month. Um, I did have a wonderful conversation with Dr. Camelia Lawrence from the Hartford Hospital Group, and that should be coming out on tomorrow. The Leisure Services will be having pumpkin carving, I believe it's this weekend, and there will be a drive-in movie, I believe, on next weekend, but everything requires registration. I believe that is all that I, the, um, I think Councillor Goff, it was mentioned in your meeting, and I know I have the information someplace about the um, service that will take place at the Congregational Church on this coming Sunday evening, honoring uh, firefighters who have lost their lives or who have been injured during the line of duty. I believe it starts at four o'clock at the Congregational Church on this Sunday. I believe, I believe that that's all that I have. Um, if we're going to look at approval of our minutes for September 27th, is there a motion on the floor? I see Councilor Merritt. I see Councilor Calhoun with a second. Any discussions? Deputy Mayor. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I did send some small uh, changes to uh, uh, India. I, I I think the minutes are fine without them. They'll be better with them. And I would hope that we make the change. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other discussion? All in favor? Any abstentions? Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
At this time, I will go for council comments. I will start with Councillor Di Lorenzo. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Really, I don't have much tonight just to congratulate all those winners of the Notable Landscape Awards. Uh, really not very, very nice. And I often do see a lot of really nice shards and landscapes driving around. So I think it's great that everybody wants to, uh, you know, beautify their, their homes. So other than that, I really don't have much to talk about tonight. So um, hope everybody has a great night and happy fall. Thank you. Happy fall. Councilor Calhoun. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as we have just mentioned, we're going into fall, deeper fall, early winter season. If you feel there is a need for you to receive assistance for heating, um, please reach out to our social services in India if you can hop on and give that telephone number. Um, that would be helpful. The number is 860-242-1895, and that's the number to Bloomfield Social and Youth Services. And repeat that number again. 860-242-1895. Thank you, ma'am. Um, again, please do not be bashful. Do not be shy. Um, from what I'm hearing on the news, uh, the rates are increasing, have increased. Um, it's gonna, it may be a rough winter, so please get your applications in. Thank you very much. Councillor Politis. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, if I remember correctly from last meeting tonight, it's Phil's last meeting with us on Zoom. I just wanted to say thank you very much for all your efforts to uh, corral us all back in and get us all moving in the right direction again and helping us find a new town manager. Um, and I uh, wish you all the best. And Enjoy your time off with your wife. I know it's well deserved. I'm sure she's looking forward to it. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Goff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll be very brief. Uh, and I, I thank you for uh, reminding, uh, pointing out the other item in the public safety. And that just for, for people to know that service that will be held uh, in memory of anyone uh, injured or uh, killed uh, in fire uh, in fire incidents, that's for the entire Hartford County and our center fire districts hosting that this year. So uh, that, that's, uh, I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, I, wanna th I wanna thank uh, the Be Bloomfield Beautification Committee for continuing their excellent work of, um, you know, the notable landscapes. I think the comment that uh, uh, the chair of that committee made at the end that by, promoting by by promoting this uh, event and by people promoting their gardens uh, it promotes the town of Bloomfield and it also uh, you know it also increases the awareness of what you can do with your landscape and also you know why people do this and how how wonderful they feel with uh, being surrounded by beauty uh, I thought the awards this year all the awards this year were wonderful and I think it's great that uh, that the beautification committee um, for years has done this, and uh, I, I hope this event continues uh, for a long time. The other, well, final thing I do want to mention tonight is um, we will have before our next meeting on Saturday, October twenty third. The um, well, it used to be annual, then it got rained out one year, and then we were last year we had COVID. So we have the, uh, the annual over the mountain hike, which will this year be a hike. It used to be a hike between the Simsbury Flower Bridge and La Salette Park, uh, the Oliver Philly House. This year will actually be from Philly Park uh, to um, the uh, Flower Bridge in Simsbury. It'll be about a six mile hike. Uh, fall color should be close to peak, maybe a hair past peak, uh, but it's a wonderful hike. Um, we, we partner with Simsbury Land Trust and with Leisure Services, who will be providing the transportation, which has not been easy to get this year because of all the bus driver shortages. Um, so the, the, there is a restricted number. You can register at the Land Trust site. Uh, it is getting close to full, but if anyone is listening and is interested in taking a hike 
uh, a week from Saturday. Uh, please um, see if there's still space and sign up. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Councilor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't have much to say tonight. I just want to also echo the same sentiments from my colleague in regards to Mr. Shang. Uh, you know, I know this is the last time, uh, you know, in this capacity as a um, town manager, I just want to personally thank you uh, for everything that you have done for me in the last four years as a new elected official uh, in this environment uh, where there's a lot of moving parts and uh, you're not only committed to your profession, but you're committed to helping uh, us and navigate through those waters. So I personally want to thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for your service to the town of Bloomfield and for the help that you have uh, embodied in, in me. Thank you. You're very welcome, Rickford. Councilor Merritt. I, I, I have to, I have to echo that. And even to an old timer like me, Phil has just done such a fantastic job in, in boosting this town up. He's, he's done so much for us. And it's, it seems to me a few years here, he's, but it's, it's a, I've now added up to quite a bit. And I, I want to thank him. Uh, along with everybody else. I, th I think it, it's, been, it's been great. And I'd also like to say about the Beautification Committee that uh, that was a great presentation tonight. I would also point out to uh, chair uh, uh, of the committee and, um, and how important that is. I think she's right that uh, we have somebody in my neighborhood who's spent the last several years improving their landscaping and it's, it's contagious. And the neighbors around it have started fixing up their houses and their landscaping. I, I, it's, it, it's just a wonderful thing to see how that kind of thing can, can be contagious and, and improve a neighborhood as, as well as a town. So um, that's all I have. Thank you. Councilor Wong. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Phil, thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> Gonna miss you. Uh, so I echo Councillor Curtin and Councillor Merritt's comments on you. Uh, you know, you've been a gem for Bloomfield. Uh, I also want to thank the uh, Beautification Committee for coming in and giving the presentation on the notable landscapes. Uh, beautiful to see such participation year after year with the community. And uh, this fall, this Saturday is Off Farms Fall Festival. Please come out and join us um, at Off Farm. It's gonna, I hope it's going to be a beautiful weekend from a weather standpoint. Our, our Bloomfield's own Ken McClary in his new role at CHC does have a tent available for the boosters and the third doses. So if you do need that out of convenience, Off Farm will have that there this weekend. So uh, there's not much to do um, or not much more to say from my standpoint. So good night and don't forget to vote in November. Thanks everyone. Um, Councilor, did I do Councilor Mayor already? I did. I did. So, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is a short piece that came in the Hartford Business Journal that might be of interest to people. Uh, R&D Dynamics, one of our few industrial operators uh, in town, was selected by the Department of Energy, U.S. Department of Energy, to develop management systems uh, and compressors for fuel cell powered fuel cell powered trucks. That's kind of a feather in, in their cap for sure. I mean, I know there, there are many companies in the country doing that sort of work, and here they're from Bloomfield. And I think that uh, we should we should be aware of that. I think they're over on Dudley Town Road. Um, the other thing is uh, one of the comment um, October twentieth. That's the last day that people can submit pictures. Uh, for the, tree, for the tree picture contest, which is being supported by the Trees for Bloomfield uh, group, which consists of Parks and Recreation, CEC and B BBC. And they're asking people to take pictures either of, uh, of their favorite tree, a tree that's a, a, a beautiful art picture, or it could be even a sad picture of a tree because it's been neglected. But the point is, is that we've asked, and there are a number of people who have already submitted uh, uh, pictures. Uh, these can be done on your iPhone. They don't have to be professional, but 
you know, I don't know the quality of, of what the submissions will be, but they'll all be judged. And the, uh, the final pictures, uh, I understand that will be uh, shown in the leisure services building at some point. And I think it's a, uh, again, it's part of being aware and being and participating. And I think it's uh, a good for, it's good for our town image to get people out there looking at our town, being aware, and these people may come forward and become active in, in something at, at a future date. Uh, so that that's one thing. Um, yes, thanks to Phil uh, for your for your stay. I, I have to plug you for that. The same way, if I if I don't plug the chair of the uh, beautification committee, I might not have a good day tomorrow. So I have to do that too <laughs> so, for all her efforts. And I think I think the presentation I think the presentation really was. Uh, said something good about our town, you know? I mean, it's people wanting to do what's, what's good for them and good for people around them and setting an example. So I, I, I really uh, thank you for your attentiveness during the presentation. I know that some of those people who were awarded the uh, nominations uh, and uh, have also suggested they wanna volunteer next year on the, on the BBC. So it's mushrooming, it's a good thing. So thank you very much and good night. Wise man. <laughs> Listen, the deputy mayor has sent everyone a subliminal message. Men, I hope that you got that. If not, please rewind the tape. Get that message. Happy wife. Happy life. So I started this meeting. I was very excited to have a council meeting. And then I remembered a couple of things. One, a few people will be, they won't be here, right? And it kind of dampened my mood throughout this meeting. So I'm going to now just take some liberties. Um, to Councillor Goff, I, and before I even say that, I want to say that everyone that runs for um, public office has some kind of drive that probably other people wouldn't understand. Why would you run for office that is going to take probably more time than you thought it would. And it pays you zero dollars and zero cents, not even mileage or a tax break. So the people that run for public office really mean well for their community and wanna invest their time in their community. Um, tonight, um, I'm gonna to say farewell to a few of our counselors. Um, I'm gonna say thank you uh, to Councillor Goff and Deputy Mayor Mann for the time, energy, and effort that you took uh, for the residents of the town of Bloomfield. I sat in on Councillor Goss' last meeting and he did say that public safety was not his thing, but for the last two years, he's gotten some information and he's gotten a little bit more into public safety and he thanked those that helped him on his committee. So that said to me, it may not be your thing, but you can definitely put your arms around it to better our town. So thank you to Councilor Goff and to Deputy Mayor Mann for your service, for the time that you have invested into the town of Bloomfield. I wanna say thank you for lessons that you have taught me personally. Um, I have learned some lessons, uh, some very hard lessons and some very easy lessons, but no importance of either one, um, or I should say, the importance of both was important. And so I thank you for that. Thank you for your time, energy, and effort. And I'm sure that while you may not still be on council, that you will still be very involved into everything that takes place in the town of Bloomfield because it still affects you. And I know that you wanna make sure that our town is the best place to live, work, and play. So thank you for your time, energy, effort. Um, I wanna say thank you to Councilor Calhoun who I remember when I asked her to serve on the design review committee, that was one hurdle. Asking her for counsel was another hurdle, but I thank you counselor. I thank you for um, being a friend. I thank you for speaking up for our residents and I thank you for taking time to invest in the town of Bloomfield. My best ever Republican friend, counselor DiLorenzo, um, I thank you for your friendship, first of all. I thank you for being able to tell me the truth. 
<laughs> I thank you for your encouragement. And I thank you for sometimes um, rubbing those wounds and saying to me that it's going to be okay. I will definitely, definitely miss the both of you in ways that you would not even imagine. To Mr. Phil Shank, the one that has kept me on the high road, the one that has pulled me out of those potholes when I have fallen in, the one that has always reminded me that the most important thing that we do as counselors is to keep Bloomfield first. I thank you. I thank you for being a wonderful statesman. I thank you that your um, reputation around the state has been stellar. I thank you for taking care of the residents of Bloomfield and the business of Bloomfield. I thank you for coming back to help us out of a difficult situation. I thank you for your leadership and your guidance. I thank you for your friendship. On behalf of the town of Bloomfield, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a difficult road at times, but you have remained steady and you have remained consistent and you have helped us. And I know that you're not going anywhere and I still have your personal cell phone number. So I will definitely be calling you. Um, I know that each of us as counselors really respect who you are and what you have been to this town. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna stop talking um, and give you some time, Mr. Shank, to say goodbye. Well, thank all of you. I've enjoyed uh, being able to return and be of service to Bloomfield and the community, all of you and our residents, citizens, businesses, and, and otherwise. So I don't have too much to say. Uh, we're staying in Bloomfield, and uh, uh, Stanley has my uh, phone numbers and email. I'll make sure that he has them. And uh, if there's issues that I can help with, that's fine. But uh, I've enjoyed my tenure, both uh, prior and interim, and uh, thank you all. And I applaud all of you for contributing, taking the time and effort and, and commitment to the community that uh, the community needs uh, uh, all the time. It, it's a calling and you've risen up and uh, you've answered that calling for all of us. Thank you. So I know this is being taped. So. Phil did say he enjoyed his time. We got that on tape. <laughs> yeah, we you got to read the tape. you got to read the fine print underneath the screen. <laughs> um, I'll make sure I highlight that. <laughs> please and thank you. Right, we can refer to this here meeting that he enjoyed it. Um, so once again, thank you to everyone, to Deputy Mayor Mann, to Councilor Ka uh, Goff. It's been four years. Um, and we've all learned a lot within that time. Counselor Calhoun, it's been two years. Counselor DiLorenzo, it's been many more years than I can count. Um, so we thank you for that. Um, do you guys want to hear me sing a song? Nope. Just nope. let's move on. <laughs> Counselor Wong said she wanted to hear it. <laughs> I was going to sing the boys to men. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. No, Counselor Politis, what do you think? No? Executive session is still on the table. So we got <laughs> Councilor Polite said, yes, let's do this. Okay. All right. I digress. Um, at this time, please, if we can have a motion to go into executive session. It, um, hold on, hold on. We're going to have our town attorney, um, uh, Sharon Howe, assistant to the town manager, town manager, um, Hawthorne, acting town manager, Shank. I think um, attorney Paul Pierce. And attorney Mara. And attorney Mara. M A R A. Mara. Okay. So can I now have a motion? So move. I, uh, first uh, and second, and all in favor? See you on the other side.
Um, can you hear the music? Yes. <laughs> that was so weird. <laughs> you look sexy, girl. Really? I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. <laughs> I'm going to need y'all to put that on mute. <laughs> y'all supposed to be in executive session. What y'all doing? <laughs> Stanley, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Do we have a separate link for executive session? Yeah, yeah, yes, you do, sir. I'm still learning, you know. I know you are. Can you send it to me again? Stanley, uh, that would be I sent it to you this morning at about nine something. Okay. So go search Sharon's name around that time. All right. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. It's so hard to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't do a soprano. You can't do an alto. None of that. Hey, Rickford. <laughs> Rickford, at, at nine something this morning, look at your email. I have it all caps, executive session. <laughs> About nine, no, about probably before 9.15, when I got to work, I did it. Tell him to search it in his email box and it'll come up. Press EX. Yeah. You don't keep emails from me, do you? I don't know where. I can't hear you, why are you so low? <laughs> All I know.
you say me on the other side, I always think that <laughs> I'm in heaven now. <laughs> I guess nobody's here yet. I'm waiting for Kevin and Patrick. Can we just make a, a, an omnibus uh, resolution given all yeah, those? So I move that omnibus resolution. <laughs> <laughs> That's, what That's what happens when you have 30 years of experience. You just make we are recording people, so this will, this is our This best. is mild to comparison what people are used to. <laughs> um, I'm waiting for Kevin. Kevin probably took a time out. Go ahead. <laughs> he wants to return. So um, does anyone have the motion? Are we going to do one motion? Are we going to do? I think Kevin's got it all written down. You know, so. Kevin, do you have all the motions? I'm just going to do one motion. You're on mute. I do. I actually did what I did last time. I did print screens of them as he was uh, doing them. So, do you want? Would you like me to read them? No, we can just look at them, can we? <laughs> we just. <laughs> Go ahead, read them, read them all. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna read, actually, I have all of them in print screens except for the solar settlement. So I'm gonna read that and then we'll, then I'll read the other ones. So um, I'd like to make the following motions. Uh, authorize attorney uh, peers to enter into a settlement with a Sonova, Tesla, Connecticut Green Bank and Connecticut Solar LLC uh, for solar leasing assessments as per his memo. Second. Well, I'm not going to read them all, and you can second. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, I move the uh, move the council for the town be authorized to enter a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of Barden LLC versus Town of Bloomfield concerning the real personal property located at One Barnard Lane, Bloomfield, Connecticut for a fair market value of $715,000 with an assessed value of $500,500. Uh, I move that the council of the town, of, town be authorized to enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of One Northwestern Drive LLC versus Town of Bloomfield concerning the real personal property located at, at One Northwestern Drive, Bloomfield, Connecticut, for a fair market value of one million four hundred thousand, with an assessed value of nine hundred eighty thousand dollars, I move that the town attorney authorize be authorized to enter, to enter enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of Naro Family Limited Partnership versus Town of Bloomfield concerning the real personal property located in Nine Texas Avenue, Bloomfield, Connecticut, as follows. For the 2019 grant list, a fair market value of $185,400 with an assessed value of $129,780,000. And for the 2020 grant list, a fair market value of $241,700 with an assessed value of $169,190. I move that the council of the town be authorized to enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of Winscar, Winscar the Sec, Winscar Two Limited Partnership, and that's spelled W-I-N-S-C-H-A-R versus Town of Bloomfield concerning the real personal property located at 800, 800 Cottage Grove Road, Bloomfield, Connecticut for a fair market value of $950,000 with an assessed value of $665,000. I move that the town attorney be authorized to enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of HG Connecticut Realty Con Company versus town of Bloomfield um, concerning the real property located. Actually, let me back up. Uh, I move that the town attorney be authorized to enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending appeal of HG Connecticut Realty Company for the 2020 grand list versus the town of Bloomfield concerning the real property located at 1415 Blue Hills Avenue and 480 Woodland Avenue, uh, Bloomfield, Connecticut, for a fair market value of 
49,850,000, excuse me, $49,850,000 and an assessed value of $34,895,000. Very good. I move that the town attorney be authorized to enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of Bloomfield. Um, hold on a second. Can't read that. Into Bloomfield something LLC. What's the address? It's to Francis Way. Uh, owner. Bloomfield That's owner it. LLC versus the town of Bloomfield concerning the real property located at 2 Francis Way, Bloomfield, Connecticut for a fair market value of $47,500,000 and an assessed value of $33,250,000. I move that the town, uh, move that the town attorney uh, be authorized to enter a stipulated agreement in the pending appe tax appeal for Eagle River uh, Roofing Services Corporation versus the Town of Bloomfield concerning the uh, personal property located at 15 Britain Drive, Bloomfield, Connecticut for a market value of the following per grand list, 418,380 for the 2016 grand list, 424,490 for the 2019 grand list, 417,690 for the 2018 grand list, um, and a, uh, uh, that's the assessed, that's the market value and an assessed value of 292,866 for the 2016 grand list, 297,193 for the 2017 grand list, and 292,383 for the 2018 grand list. Uh, I move the town chair be authorized to enter a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of FJS Properties LLC versus the town of Bloomfield concerning the real property located at 1397 Blue Hills Avenue, Bloomfield, Connecticut for a fair market value of $585,000 and an assessed value of $409,500. I move that the town uh, attorney be authorized to enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of FJS Properties LLC versus the town of Bloomfield concerning the real, per, the real property located at 125 Old Town, uh, Old, Old Town, Old Iron Ore Road, Bloomfield, Connecticut for a fair market value of 895,000 and an assessed value of $626,500. I move that the town attorney be authorized into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of Sponzo Enterprises LLC versus town of Bloomfield concerning the real real personal property located at 86 West Dudley Town Road, Bloomfield, Connecticut for a fair market value of 722,000 and an assessed value of $505,400. And finally, I move that the council, of, of, uh, council for the town be authorized to enter into a stipulated judgment in the pending tax appeal of Patricia Foster and Ronald Foster versus the town of Bloomfield concerning the personal property located at Zero Philly Street, Bloomfield, Connecticut, map ID number 300 slash 1022, unique ID number R0, or R0, or R0 and zero Philly, town, Philly uh, Street, Bloomfield, Connecticut, map ID number 300 slash 1023, unique ID number R02361 to restore the prior existing farmland exemption as provided under Connecticut General Statutes 12-107C uh, for the purposes of the October 1st, 2019 grant list and continuing thereafter subject to the requirements of Connecticut General Statutes sections 12-107C and 12-504 uh, or allowed by law. Uh, so now, Joe, you can second. Thank you, I'll second. <laughs> I, I hope. I hope Ooh. we have copies of all of that. Um, <laughs> I, I any, yes. any, um, any discussion, uh, Councilor DeLorenzo? What's that up just, just one, one little thing. I, I'm sure that this is all fine, but will finance validate that 
the math is correct so that the assessed values uh, are all equal to 70% of the um, appraised value. Yes. Thank you. So barring that that's all correct, and yes. there's any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion Madam Mayor, yeah. oh, I will be abstaining from the Winstar to limited partnership piece. That the I, where? The who? The Winstar to limited partnership, W-I-N-S-C-H-A-R. What property is that? You know, Mark's office. to limited partnership. I mean, which property is that? Address? Cottage Grove. 800 Cottage Grove. Okay. Um, so we have one abstain. So it's one motion. So we have we have one abstention. Let me do a, a let me do a roll call vote. Um, because because it is just one motion. Um, Councillor Merritt. Aye. Councillor Politis. Aye. Councillor Calhoun. Councillor Curtin. Deputy Mayor. Aye. Councillor DiLorenzo. Aye. Councillor Goff. Aye. Mayor votes aye. So there is eight ayes, one abstention. How are we going to do this without it. Councillor Goff? Huh. Excuse me? Yeah. How are we going to do this next year without Councillor Goff? Mm. Well, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to clean your glasses, Councillor Mary. I don't know what to, I don't know what to tell you. Um, at this time, is there another motion on the floor? Yes, I move we adjourn. Councillor Calhoun made the motion. I believe Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Mann second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, all. Good night. 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 Thank you, Kevin. Good night, Phil.